Hey, hey, hello, I'm Kirokan, also known as Corvus Cornix, and welcome to Jack, yet another Crowcast where I pick a game I played for a week and then I'll talk about it. This week's game is Mad Max for the PS4. It's an action adventure apocalypse game uh, developed by Avalanche Studios and published by Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment in 2015. And also, there will be spoilers up ahead, just so you know, but first, a little backstory. So, randomly, the YouTube algorithm recommended um, some gameplay of this game a couple of weeks ago and then as usual <laughs> I forgot about it and once just browsing the PSN it popped up in the feed and uh, yeah for really cheap as well so that's why I played it this week. So before I start to talk about the game I need to mention that I love the movies, I love the setting of the Mad Max, the world, the shortage of gasoline, the desert, the sand, the sweat and tears and that everybody in this world needs to fend for themselves to basically survive the daily uh, struggles. And then you get an introduction once you start a game, what really happened to the world, and uh, I guess spoilers, it ended. And then you have a couple of options to select new game, settings, VB play, and I guess VB stands for Warner Brothers play, redeem codes, and credits. And then it's time for, well, <laughs> the real game to start. So Max is out driving, and on this, like, dashboard there is a photo of his wife and dead daughter. So if you haven't seen the movies, I can highly recommend them, but... A basic summary is that Max used to be like a road warrior, like this cop, and he lost his wife and daughter. They basically got ran over or run over by a biker gang and he got his revenge. But ever since then, he's been crazy and, you know, tried to pick up his life as one do in the apocalypse. So he's out riding, he's getting chased by these war boys and he rams a couple of them and then they attack him while he tries to steal some gas because in this setting there are... You know, all the natural resources and everything are very low, so you have to scavenge what you can. And that's the brilliant thing about the Mad Max setting, because it's a daily struggle just to get water and whatnot. So, well, he gets attacked and he gets beaten and his clothes and boots get taken from him as well. And they pound his car to take his car and he jumps aboard his war rig uh, and he gets attacked by the main guy, this beefy guy with a chainsaw stick and this really stupid and dangerous weapon but uh you know it's mad max so anything goes right so the <laughs> the brilliant thing about this na game is the name of this guy he's called scrabble scrotus and i think it's a funny play on words actually so this confrontation leads to scrabble scrotus getting his head chainsawed uh, and he survives somehow because i guess he's a badass and max gets thrown off the war rig along with a dog and the dog actually wakes him up and max follows the dog so the first objective of the game is to find drinkable water and Sam, Sam, and Max does so. And also the dog is captured by this hunchback called Shumbucket. And Max somewhat intimidates him, somewhat befriending him with his shotgun. And this is one of the funnier things. Max has this sawed off shotgun and it doesn't have any ammo in it, but Shumbucket doesn't know about that. So Shumbucket agrees to help and he frees the dog, but the dog is hurt. So... He needs some wire to patch up his buggy so they can go and basically um, try to treat the dog and everything. And uh, there's a funny reference. Max goes to get the things and he eats some dog food, exactly like the film. It's actually a reference. Uh, so the dog food is called Dinky D and it's, it's a funny homage, let's just say that. So Max basically goes through a little cliff, a hole in the cliff into a ravine where he fights some war boys and he also picks up some ammo for his shotgun. So the way the shotgun works is you hold the R1 and you press the circle to fire the shotgun. Uh, and then if you don't have any ammo, you just use your fist. So the, the kind of, the mechanical fighting is like the Batman Arkham games. You fight with the, the square button and triangle is dodge and you have like a special role that you can do with like people with like knives and stuff, just like the Arkham games. The only problem with this battle system is that sometimes the camera is not following along, but it's a, a minor nitpick. And then I got what I needed from that location. And a good thing about this game is that once you take in everything in a location, you get an indicator that, well, you've done it 100%. Then I took the dog to the buggy and um, got that thing fixed. And then went up into a lookout point and looked down at this camp where Max's car was at. So the car is basically getting scrapped, so there is, well, Max needs a new car. So they, they take the buggy, Sean Bucket and Max, and they go to uh, Sean Bucket's hideout, and uh, there's a new mission to go to the graveyard, and you bring up this map by the, uh, like the bar in the middle of the controller, I don't know what you call it, and then it shows the map and all the useful locations. And the more you play, the, the map obviously expands. You get new missions and, well, new stuff to do. 
and then the mission start and you go out by night because there are not a lot of raiders around. And not far along, the car runs out of gas and you're forced to stop and, well, scavenge for some gas. You kill a couple of raiders or in scrappers, you get their fuel, uh, get like an oil tank to blow up some gates and going through a narrow path uh, with dangerous explosive dangling about. And you do this, by the way, just so you can rebuild your magnum opus like your car, like a new awesome V8 car. And the funny thing about Shumbucket is that he believes you are the driver. Uh, I don't know what that implies, but basically you are a saint to him. You are like this Jesus character, I guess. And eventually you reach the graveyard and uh, now I finally understood what they mean by graveyard. So this is basically a graveyard for cars. So you get to choose your, well, you frame your body of the car. So there's the furnace, the shovel face, the wild hunt, the die roll and something I wrote down that I can't actually read myself. So you select basic like the frame of it and then you get attacked by a couple of enemies. There are actually a lot so you have to like get into the mechanics. So all up until this point has been like a tutorial. The game tells you exactly what to do and how to do things. and. Uh, yeah, that's what's happening. And then there is a car chase and you have to outrun these uh, bad scrappers. And you get to learn about the, uh, the harpoon and stuff and how you basically shoot out enemies. And it's kind of an interesting thing where everything kind of slows down and you get a chance to shoot out. It's really cool. And then you return to the hideout to get some repairs done on the car and get a harpoon installed. And uh, I got that mixed up, so now you get the harpoon. <laughs> and the cool thing about the hideout, it's like an old rusty tanker, so it's basically on the bottom of the seabed. Uh, you get this installed, you get the harpoon installed just so you can destroy these scarecrow towers, and you're supposed to drag them down to weaken the uh, influence of the current warlord in that region, uh, and that leads to you attacking a camp to basically lower the influence even more, but you have to take care of the sniper first. And I died so many times during this because I just didn't know what to do. So what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to use the harpoon on the sniper tower and drag everything down with it. Go to the gas tank and destroy the um, the flamethrower at the main gate. Go through the main gate, kill all the scavengers, the war boys in this case, inside. Destroy the scrotus emblems and um, collect all the scraps. So below this structure you can actually find a strange wanderer and you've seen it before actually when you were looking for wire for the buggy. So he's down there at the K system and you talk to him and later you can go visit him and you get a chance to learn some wasteland abilities which is like you can hit harder or um, you know have more health. And after this encounter you get the option, uh, well not option I guess, but you upgrade your car with nitro so you can go a bit faster in short bursts. And then the bad guy shows to bomb your location, you're forced to flee with Shum to this other guy called Yeet in his stronghold. And Yeet is not that friendly but uh, he basically lets you stay there because Shum is a good mechanic and I uh, promise to repair his vehicles and whatnot. And the fight against Grotus continues and I'm not gonna spoil any more of the game because I believe this game needs to be played. So gameplay, help Mad Max get his revenge and a new car in this dystopian desert landscape. Control, the left stick moves Max around, the right stick is camera and you can change the uh, inverted axis in the menu, thank god. X interacts, L2 is a jump but it's a weak jump, R2 is sprint, square punches, triangle counters, R1 does this roll and if you have some ammo for your shotgun you press R1 and circle to fire. And while in the car, pressing R2 accelerates and L2 is brakes. And you can also push the, the options button, the pause button, to bring up some bios of Max and Legends and cool stuff. And it actually has a percentage on how much you've done in the campaign so far. Graphics. So this game used the Havoc engine, and I'm not sure if it's a graphic engine or a physical engine, but I probably should have looked that up, by the way. <clears throat> Uh, but I like the the way this game looks. It captured the wasteland perfectly. Even the lens gets like solar flares and dust on it, which is a really cool and neat effect. Sound and music. Mats Lundgren made the soundtrack for this game and it's very ambient, but it also have this adrenaline flow to it when you are in a car chase or, you know, being in combat and whatnot. And it's kind of cool. I totally forgot about this, but this is actually a Swedish studio, the Avalanche Studio crew. Easter egg secrets and glitches. So if you push down twice on the d-pad while in the car, you can drive the car in first person. You can also find the plane from the movie Beyond Thunderdome, which is kind of cool if you've seen that movie. It's not the best <laughs> movie in the franchise, but it's okay. There's also a Half-Life reference in this game. You can find a, a broken up body of Gordon Freeman, and you will also find that his arm is severed holding a crowbar. So in conclusion, I wrote yes, play it if you like Fallout and the Mad Max movies. So this game has great visuals and the narration is pretty good. Uh, it has a basically has a setting that I like. 
The only problem I got with this game is the combat camera, and sometimes it's a bit janky, and also some of the prompts when you're supposed to turn valves and stuff, the, the kind of hitbox or like the triggers are very small, if that makes sense, so you have to be dead on when you try to go down ladders and stuff, and that's kind of annoying, but otherwise it's a good game and I highly recommend it, so anyway, thanks for listening and for watching, and take care.